so I'm, I'm Joseph Polvida. I'm an assistant medical director at Family Health Centers of San Diego and also a uh, medical director overseeing SVD services for the organization. Um, FHCSD is the largest federally qualified health center in San Diego. We have roughly about 24 primary care clinics, seven standalone behavioral clinics, mobile clinics. Uh, we have an outpatient intensive SVD program, a MAP program. So we're a very large entity. Um, and the focus of today, we're going to be talking about opioid use disorder, the basics of addiction and treatment, and uh, I've been given more time than I was given yesterday, but still, this is a very, very big topic that takes several days at a conference, so I'll try to distill it um, for everyone. Agenda, we'll talk about opioids and opioids, which, uh, what's the difference among the two, we'll touch on the opioid epidemic. How opioids and opioids work, uh, responsible use of pain medications and the consequences that that can lead to addiction and stigma as well as treatment. So let's start with what are opiates. Opiates are naturally occurring compounds. They come from the opioid poppy plant, which you can see there, and you can derive uh, naturally occurring compounds, such as morphine, which you can see on the upper right there that we use in the hospital in an IV formulation, codeine, which you can see in pills, and heroin, which uh, many of you are aware of. There's two formulations of that. Uh, one is in the white powder. It's often referred to as China white. And on the lower right, you can see black tar heroin, which is more prominent here on the West Coast. Then we have opioids, which are synthetic compounds, meaning that they're produced in a lab. Uh, they're man-made. Examples of that are fentanyl, which I'm sure everyone here has heard of. Oxycontin, Percocet, and Vicodin. And these substances are really what start with fuel the opioid epidemic to begin with, with prescription pain pills. And we started seeing that right around the late 1990s to early 2000s. You can follow this line and see that much of the addiction that we had was due to overprescribing. Now, there's a wide variety of reasons why that happened. Um, it's not just doctors prescribing, but it was. Uh, propaganda that was given by um, the pharmaceutical companies, so on and so forth. I won't get into that, but there's various reasons why that line just shot up and took off. Right around 2010-ish, uh, 2009, we started getting very savvy about the problem that we were contributing to addiction with overprescribing. So we started clamping down a little on this, and then heroin started taking off, which was the next cheap and available drug out in the market. And currently we have a third wave, which we're seeing Fentanyl, which started taking off right around 2012, 13. And you can see the line just shoot up here. That's what's causing a lot of the overdose deaths out in the community. Um, what is fentanyl? So if you look at the upper, um, uh, I guess that's my view right, right? Upper right, you'll see a penny and you'll see some flakes of fentanyl there. They're like grains of salt. That's enough to kill an adult individual, that amount right there. Uh, for comparison, this is also a lethal dose of heroin on the bottom, and that's a lethal dose of fentanyl, and you can see the difference as far as quantity. Fentanyl is about 50 to 100 uh, times more potent than, um, than heroin, and I'm, I'm, it's cutting off on some of the slide over here on this end. So, And then on the bottom, you'll see what are called blues out in the street, or M30 tablets. Those are illicit tablets that are produced and sold in the street, and they contain fentanyl, and that's also what's driving a lot of the overdose deaths. Unfortunately, we're starting to see fentanyl pop up in other uh, drugs as well, cocaine and methamphetamines. And as you can see, cocaine is on the upper left. It's a powder formulation, so it's easy to mix fentanyl into that. But we're also seeing it in crystal meth, and this is a study here that showed that right around 2015, we started really seeing a line of take off for cocaine, which is in blue, of, seeing, of detecting fentanyl. But methamphetamines is following closely thereafter. So um, we uh, at Family Health Centers prescribe Narcan to anyone that has a history of stimulant use disorder, meaning methamphetamines or cocaine because of this reason. So how do opioids work? Well, they bind to receptors in the brain. And by binding receptors in the brain and the nervous system, primarily the spinal cord, you'll elicit a certain response. And most of us know what that response is, which is pain relief. Now in general, if you're prescribed an opioid for a short period of time, and the key word is short, okay, and per doctor's orders as prescribed, it's generally safe. The risk isn't zero, okay, there's always a risk with taking an opioid, but generally it's safe. 